Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you. Hi, I'm Ross Rappaport. Welcome to the latest edition of Roadfly TV. I guess it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Honda and Acura products. In fact, that's all I've ever owned, aside from a brief and ill-considered dalliance with a 95 Taurus SHO. My first car was a Civic, second was an Integra Type R, now I drive a Civic Si sedan and my wife has an Accord V6 Coupe. I've even been called by our own publisher, Charlie Romero, a Honda fanboy. So I'm going to try and keep it as objective as possible in my review of the all new 2011 TSX Sportwagon. This is simply a wagon version of Acura's already popular second generation TSX. So let's check out the wagon portion first. Our test car has the tech package, a $3,500 option, which includes this handy power tailgate. So naturally, we've got a cargo cover back here, as well as a really handy storage compartment between the floor and the spare tire well. There's some smaller storage off to the side, as well as a bunch of tie downs. As far as storage space goes, with the rear seats up, there's 26 cubic feet. That's only two inches less than Acura's own compact SUV, the RDX. With the rear seats down, that number jumps to 60.5 inches, which is exactly matching the RDX and flat out blows away competing wagons from Audi, BMW, Cadillac, and Volvo. So that number alone puts this car right on my radar. I'm currently in the market for a vehicle that will accommodate myself, my wife, my fairly large dog, and any more two or four legged additions down the road. Acura's MDX and RDX SUVs are great vehicles in their own right, but neither of them can manage more than 23 miles per gallon on the highway. This car does it a lot better at 22 in the city and 30 on the highway. And that's because there's only one engine choice. The Sport Wagon exclusively uses the sedan's base motor, a 2.4 liter inline four cylinder, making 201 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 170 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. The Sport Wagon is also only offered with one transmission, the normal TSX's five-speed automatic. And that brings me to my only gripe with this car, is that Acura has a lot of really sophisticated performance hardware, but none of it trickled down to this car for some reason. For example, the TSX sedan is offered with a V6, which gets it to 60 miles an hour in the high five-second range. And since there's only a two mile per gallon reduction when compared with this car's four cylinder, I think it would have been appropriate to at least offer it. As is, this car's acceleration is adequate, but not inspiring. So I'm not gonna risk my driver's license for your viewing pleasure like I normally do, and I'm pretty sure my cameraman's happy about that. This car will get to 60 in the high eight second range, and the quarter mile should eventually fall in the mid 16s. Matters are helped somewhat by the car's transmission, which includes a sport mode that holds the gears for longer and paddle shifters on the steering column. So from what I've read, as you know, Roadfly doesn't have its own testing equipment for stuff like handling and braking, but the numbers are pretty good, besting most crossover SUVs. But as with most Honda and Acura offerings, this car is more than just the numbers. It's wonderfully communicative and so well balanced and easy to just push it and toss it around at higher speeds. And everything is where you want it to be. Nothing's annoying. All the controls are exactly in the right place and work just the way that you would imagine they would. Actually, that reminds me, I should probably pull over and talk about the interior before we run out of tape. Fans of the TSX will feel right at home. Actually, any Honda or Acura owner should be able to get situated in here within a matter of minutes while wearing a blindfold. It's very comfortable and ergonomic, and as per the Acura standard, there are tons of little cubby holes everywhere. There's also a cool sliding armrest atop a climate-controlled center console, which is also where I've got my iPod connected to the car's award-winning ELS 460-watt stereo system, which is universally acknowledged as one of the best OEM car systems ever made and that's controlled through the car's nav interface, which again, is renowned as being one of the best the industry has ever seen. So the nav system probably deserves its own video, but the short version is nobody does OEM navigation systems like Acura. In terms of the cars I've tested, only Infiniti comes close. The tech package may be pricey, but I think it's worth it. 
because it really simplifies the driving experience rather than complicating it. There's real-time traffic updates with a rerouting function, real-time weather, Zagat ratings, and an option to control your song selection by voice. There's also a rear view camera, which is starting to make this tech package sound like kind of a bargain. And that really describes this car in a nutshell. It seems pricey at first, with an as-tested MSRP of $34,610, not including destination charges. But not pricey once you start comparing it to wagons from Audi and BMW, whose base models start at $36,000 and $37,000 respectively, and are nowhere near as well equipped as this. So I think it makes an excellent, sensible alternative to those cars, as well as to SUVs of all types, unless you really must have the added ground clearance and all-wheel drive. And if this car ever gets a more sporting drivetrain, it'll jump from sensible competitor to class leader, in my opinion. I'm Ross Rappaport. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. Please join our community by subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave us some comments, and find me on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you.